Welcome to our daily devotion. It's Tuesday, May 12th, and this is day 56 of our temporary pause of on-campus activities in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Before I came to Epiphany, I was senior pastor of Zion Lutheran Church and Schools, and one of the things that I started there was a worship service for Generation X. We had it on a Sunday night. It was in the gymnasium. It was kind of an informal but very reverent service. And I remember the night of Sunday, September 16th, 2001, just five days after 9-11. It was a pretty serious service, and I had prepared well for it. And right before the service began, one of my confirmands that I had confirmed at Zion, named David, came up to me before the service and asked if he could close in prayer. I kind of looked at him and I said, are you sure? And he said, yes. He said, I'm going to use the seven steps of prayer. Well, at the end of the service, David gave a wonderful and very meaningful prayer using the seven steps of prayer. That's something that I had taught he and his classmates in confirmation. And so today and over the next six days, I'd like to teach you. These seven steps you can use whether you're praying in public, opening up a meeting here at church, or in private. And what you're going to be doing is taking everything the Bible says about prayer and putting it together in an easy to follow outline. Step number one is this. Use the name by which God has revealed himself in the Bible. We don't make up names for God. Instead, he chooses to reveal them to us in the inspired and inerrant words of the Bible. And he considers his name very, very highly and to be revered and to be respected. So if you go to the Old Testament and look at the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, and I didn't bookmark this, so let me find that quickly for you. And you go to verse 7, it says this, You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. And he's talking about the names by which he's revealed himself in the Bible. If you go to the New Testament, when Jesus was teaching us the Lord's Prayer, Jesus said this, and it's in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. This then is how you should pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed means to consider something holy or very sacred. It's kind of like the detachment that guards the tomb of the unknown soldier. They treat that as very hallowed ground, and they have very exacting procedures they follow in guarding that tomb. And so God wants us to treat his name with respect and to show no disregard for it by casually using it or to profane it. So first step of prayer is to use one of the divine names that God's revealed himself by in the Bible. Here's the five names I use. Lord God is kind of the most serious name by which God reveals himself in the Old Testament. God Almighty is another name, and I just reverse those words and we'll begin a prayer, Almighty God. Oftentimes, if you, I open up a, a meeting with an invocation for the city council or the fire department, I'll use Almighty God. And then, of course, you can pray to one of the three persons of the Trinity. And those are the other three names that I often use in prayer. Jesus used the term Heavenly Father. When I pray to Jesus, I usually say, Lord Jesus. And certainly, at Epiphany, during the worship services, you'll hear me pray to the Holy Spirit for guidance before we delve into God's word for a message. So the five names that I use are either one of the three names for the Trinity, or Lord God, or God Almighty. Let's go ahead and put this first step in action in a real prayer. So I invite you to bow your heads. Lord God, we ask that we would hold your name in the highest of respect. May we not casually misuse it or intentionally misuse it in profanity, but instead may we hallow your name, hold it in the highest of respect, and treat it sacredly. Help us to develop the habit of when we address you in prayer of using one of your revealed names. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.